Madam President, as a senator for the state of Indiana, I just can't let Febru February pass without offering a tribute to one of our state's favorite sons, Abraham Lincoln. As we approach his birthday, we celebrate how Lincoln's story is perhaps the ultimate example of American opportunity. Lincoln spent the formative days of his childhood in the Hoosier wilderness, and he ultimately rose from the humblest of circumstances, a log cabin all the way up to the White House. As president, he helped preserve our union and end slavery, setting a course so that all Americans, regardless of race or circumstances, could follow his upwards path. Lincoln challenged America to honor the promise in its Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal. And he reminds us still today that if we fail to do so, government by consent of the govern, govern cannot long endure. I think all of us here in the United States Senate today can attest that these are difficult times. We face all sorts of challenges, foreign and domestic, and therefore our politics are difficult. But I would argue, and I do so here today, that uh, the politics we're facing today aren't nearly as difficult as those that Abraham Lincoln faced. During a week like this, where passions run high, we've had numerous debates behind closed doors and on this floor, we should keep perspective. And we should avoid dramatic comparisons and, and take dire predictions with a grain of salt. But concern about the national discourse, which informs our, our political system, is indeed well-founded. Dialogue between Americans so essential to the maintenance of a democratic republic has coarsened. It's, it's reached the point that, at times, it scarcely resembles conversation. This form of estrangement leads to hurt feelings separateness, civil dysfunction. And my fear, and what brings me down to this floor, is not just to honor a great man, I fear that this portends much worse divisions moving forward. Abraham Lincoln knew this. He understood this dynamic. Decades before the Civil War, he identified a remedy in an address that upset the residents of Springfield, Illinois. You see, 19th century America was awash with passionate reform movements, much like today in the great American tradition. Many of their followers sought to cure societal ills with great zeal and commitment. One example was the temperance movement sort of a dated term, but the temperance movement was a campaign against drinking the demon rum, alcoholic beverages. On February 22, 1842, the 110th anniversary of George Washington's birthday, Abraham Lincoln spoke to a gathering of reformers at Springfield Second Presbyterian Church as part of a temperance festival. Must have been a grand old time. Lincoln was 33 years old. He was a member of Illinois' House of Representatives. And as he later said, he was an old line Whig. It was a political party whose base, to borrow a modern term, whose base included members of social reform movements. But Lincoln did not use this occasion to curry favor with his base. No. Instead, Abraham Lincoln offered advice that is still relevant to us today. The invitation to speak came from Springfield's chapter of the Washingtonian Temperance Society. 
This organization was founded two years prior in Baltimore by six friends, all recovering alcoholics. In a short period of time, the Washingtonians started a revolution in treating addiction. The society's numbers quickly swelled just a few years after its founding. Chapters spread across the country into the frontier. In the Washingtonian success, Lincoln recognized a particular means of building coalitions and addressing intractable problems. And at its core was something especially relevant, I would argue, in our era of addition by subtraction. As he put it, persuasion. Persuasion. Kind. Unassuming persuasion. Previous efforts to curb alcoholism, you see, as, as Lincoln recounted, were often self-righteous in their nature. Perhaps that characterization sounds familiar to some when we reflect on the current discourse. Self-righteous in their nature and impractical in their demands. Lest I sound quaint, that rings a bit true to me. As we reflect on present day Washington and the debates we sometimes have on this floor. The Washingtonians' approach and expectations differed, and that's why they were successful. They damned the drink, but not the drinker. Their cure, such as it was, was based in compassion. It's based in understanding, not condemnation. They saw a fellow citizen suffering from the disease as a friend in need of help, not a helpless sinner. Lincoln contrasted the approach and effect of the Washingtonians with their predecessors, the older reformers. The older reformers, Lincoln recalled, communicated, as he put it, in the thundering tones of anathema and denunciation. Now, we're all, no matter our political persuasion, familiar with those thundering tones. The truth is, we're, we're all guilty. We're all guilty of those thundering tones from time to time. And perhaps from time to time, those thundering tones, tones are appropriate and necessary. And they have a great deal of impact when used sparingly. We're all guilty from time to time, forgetting that we're erring men and women. But Lincoln suggested a gentler alternative. It's an old and true maxim, maxim he re reasoned, that a drop of honey catches more flies than a gallon of gall. That's how the Hoosier put it. It's that drop of honey, Lincoln continued, which draws men and women to our sides, convinces that we are indeed friends. Friends. This from one of the most intelligent, successful, effective, polemicists, debaters, litigators, and politicians in all of human history. He regarded his opponents as friends. And this, in his words, is the great high road to their reason. When once gained, you will find but little trouble in convincing his judgment of the justice of your cause, if indeed that cause really be a just one. Some Lincolnian humility mixed in with age-old wisdom. Now, across our politics and in our media, we seem so convinced sometimes of, of, of our justness, of our cause, that it has become in vogue to cancel 
a modern term, cancel the other side and chase away those on our own who don't see them, that other side, as enemies. Tribalism unleashed. And where does this tribalistic impulse to cancel and ostracize lead us? It's an easy way to get booked on television these days. It is guaranteed to increase the number of social media followers you have. You might even rile up a rally or a crowd from time to time. But Abraham Lincoln, before the age of social media, predicted exactly where this would lead us. Deem a fellow citizen a foe to be shunned and despised, and he will retreat within himself, close all the avenues to his head and his heart. It's human nature. And therefore, unchanged and unchangeable. Such is, a man, uh, such is a man, he continued, and so must he be understood by those who would lead him, even to his own best interest. Abraham Lincoln believed that the American Revolution defied human history by proving men and women capable of governing themselves. Our original birth of freedom led to the design of a republic, a republic in which citizens decide what's in their best interest. But determining it, it often requires passionate, loud, angry debates properly circumscribed by a social, moral, ethical framework. It includes a balance with generous measures of trust and understanding. An absence of this balance gives way to discord, and that discord makes us all weaker, collectively weaker, even individually weaker. On the surface, Lincoln's speech in 1842 was about a means of combating alcoholism and achieving reforms. Look deeper, though. Its passages still today illustrate how we can continue to prove history wrong together. Remember, remember the power of reason even in our most passionate arguments. Find the empathy to form a bridge to our estranged countrymen. They're out there. and allow forbearance towards those among them we may disagree with. Forbearance. Abraham Lincoln relied on these values throughout his career, even in America's darkest hour. They remain vital to our national harmony, to our common good. So as we mark the occasion of Lincoln's birthday in 2024, we should call on, on these values once again. Thank you.